designs that move get noticed, and making that happen is actually easier than you think. After Effects is the best place to add that motion magic while still giving you the creative control we both know you want, because your awesome designs deserve better than just sitting there, right? Hey, I'm Kyle Hamrick. I'm a bring your own laptop instructor and a motion designer and video creator with over 20 years of experience. I love After Effects and I love teaching others how to use it effectively. And you know what? A lot of designers love it too, even if it does seem big and scary at first. If you're already using other Adobe design apps, a lot of After Effects is actually going to be surprisingly familiar. Let's check it out. Up first, designing effectively. Effects are half the name of this app, and there are literally hundreds of cool ones that you can apply to make your designs pop, and also build things in a super flexible way that would be much harder to do in Photoshop or Illustrator. Since you can animate almost every property, it means almost everything in this whole app is totally non-destructive. But if you want to use the same effect on several different layers, adding those one by one would be pretty tedious. That's where adjustment layers come in. You probably already know adjustment layers from Photoshop, and they work very similarly in After Effects. But here, you can apply almost any effect, instead of just a few. Let's create a new adjustment layer by coming up to Layer, New, Adjustment Layer, and it creates that for us as the top layer in the timeline. I'll set this to yellow, just so it's easier for you to keep track of. Layers in After Effects work vertically like the Layers panel you're already used to. When something overlaps, whatever's on top is what you see. Since we haven't added any effects to the adjustment layer yet, there's nothing to see. Let's fix that by coming over to the Effects and Presets panel and searching for Tritone. I'll just apply that to my adjustment layer and then come over to Effect Controls and set this to something like this bright fuchsia. Since this adjustment layer is on top, this Tritone effect is now being applied to everything below it. If I move that down in the layer stack, now it's only affecting these layers. Let's move it down again. You get the idea. I'll put this back up top so I can point something out. This is a layer just like any other. Notice the bounding box? So I can move it, scale it, whatever, and it's still applying the effect to all the layers below it in the layer stack, but also only where those layers are below it visually. I could also draw a mask to restrict this effect to only be seen within this area, and I can feather this out to create more interesting looks. These are great for any time you want to add one effect to multiple layers, like creating a background blur, or adding final color correction on top of your finished animation. Taking advantage of adjustment layers can help you make your animations pop with way less trouble. Ready to become a time traveler? I'm assuming you've probably already explored the After Effects timeline a bit, but if you're doing things the slow way, it might keep you from having as much fun in here as you should. And hey, there's nothing wrong with just dragging the CTI, that stands for Current Time Indicator, of course, or with clicking and dragging on the timecode value over here. But let me hook you up with a couple of great keyboard shortcuts to help you move around the timeline faster so you can spend more of your time being creative. To advance frame by frame, you can press page down to move forward or page up to move backward. Hold shift while pressing either of those to jump 10 frames at a time. And if you're working at 30 frames per second, like I am here, that means holding shift and pressing either of those one, two, three times moves you exactly one second. Want to jump to the very first frame of your timeline? Easy, just press home or press end to jump to the last frame. When you have a specific layer selected, you can press the I key to jump to the layer's first frame, also called its in point. Or you can press the O key to jump to the layer's last frame, known as the out point. Let's reveal the keyframes on these layers, and now I can jump between these using the J key to jump to the previous visible keyframe, or K to jump to the next visible keyframe. Okay, one more. There's kind of a lot going on here, right? Well, maybe you only want to jump between the position keyframes on this triangle layer. With that property selected, hold Shift while pressing J or K, and now it will navigate only between those position keyframes and ignore everything else. Hopefully these timeline tips will get you moving faster, giving you more time to make beautiful animations, right? All right, time to finally get yourself in shape. Shape layers are one of my favorite After Effects features. They're like a mini version of Adobe Illustrator, but contained within a single layer. In fact, you can convert an imported Illustrator layer, or full design, using this menu command, Create Shapes from Vector Layer. Now you can edit these pieces directly, even animating every single path point if you really want to. That's super helpful, but you can also draw your own shapes right in After Effects. 
Without any other layers selected, simply come up to your toolbar and find the Shape tool. Click and hold to reveal this little menu of the available shapes. I'll choose an ellipse. And just click and drag down in the viewer to draw a shape. I'll hold Shift to make this a perfect circle. To create custom paths, you can use the Pen tool. It works just like in Photoshop or Illustrator. Click to create a point, click again to create a hard corner, or click and drag to create a curve. Either way, now that a shape layer exists, you can come over to the Properties panel to edit things like the size, change the stroke or fill color, and maybe even change this to a gradient. So these are nice and all, but the real power of shape layers is actually hiding down in the timeline. You just have to twirl them open and not be afraid to experiment a little bit. Once you see the possibilities, I think you'll be hooked, just like me. Down here in the timeline, you'll see a shape group, and inside that is a path, a stroke, a fill, and then transform properties specifically for this group. But you can actually have multiple paths or multiple groups on a single shape layer. So if I duplicate this and then move this top one up a bit, you can see we have two shapes on the layer, each with their own stroke and their own fill. Now check out this add flyout. That's where all the really good stuff is. It's full of these additional modifiers that you can add to the shapes. Let's try merge paths. This lets you combine the above shapes in different ways, like merge, add, subtract, intersect, or exclude intersections. And then it adds the stroke and fill to the new shape created by that combination. This is just like Illustrator's Pathfinder tool, but totally non-destructive. And of course, this is an animation program, so any of these pieces can move. One of my favorite things in this menu is the repeater. That gives you a controllable number of copies of your above objects. Let's say we want eight copies. Each copy is being offset 100 pixels in X, that's horizontally, and maybe we'll change the scale too. Nice. You can use multiple repeaters to create a grid of objects like this, all of which can be edited from one place because they're all just copies of the same original shape. If you want a stroked path to draw itself on, look no further than trim paths. Just add this to your shape layer, and now you have a start and end value that you can edit or animate to make your path reveal itself. What's really interesting is that the order of these modifiers matters. So on this simple path with a stroke, I've added a zigzag, an offset paths, and then a trim paths, which I could use to trim around that offset line like this. But if I change the order of these, let's move trim paths to the top. So now this stroked path is being trimmed, then zigzagged, then offset, and whoa, that's a totally different look, right? As you can see, shape layers are full of creative possibilities, and I wasn't really even animating things yet. I really encourage you to get in here and explore. You can make some really amazing stuff once you get a handle on how these work. See what cool combos you can figure out. How are we doing so far? Tips like these are great, and I've got a couple more good ones coming right up. But if you want to go deeper, I've actually got a whole course called After Effects Essentials, and I bet it's perfect for you. Check out the link in the description if you're ready to learn the fundamentals of how to make great looking motion graphics in After Effects. All right, let's dive back in. And now for some tremendous texture tips. Textures add a lot to a design, and animated textures are a great way to bring energy without having to animate every single element. You can create your own textures or grab them from your favorite stock site, but the biggest tip is to make sure they're much larger than your frame. This gives you the flexibility to move them around freely without worrying about the edges getting cut off, and that means you've got plenty of room to animate this thing. I have this texture layer currently at the top of my layer stack, so it's easy to see. I would like to animate this to give it some energy. I'll come up to my viewer and just zoom out a bit using my scroll wheel. Head over to the Properties panel and create a position keyframe, and then I'll jump forward 10 frames using Shift plus Page Down. Then I'll just drag this to a new position, jump forward another 10 frames, and just repeat this until I've filled up the whole timeline with random positions. And we're done, so let's do a preview. Huh, well, that's not what I wanted at all. Each of these keyframes is just moving to the next position value over that 10 frames, because that's what I just told it to do. But I want each of these to hold their values instead. So I'll come over here and click on the word position to highlight all of those keyframes. Right click on any of them and choose toggle hold keyframe. As soon as I click that, you'll see the keyframes change shape. 
And now, instead of animating between them, each of these position values holds until we get to the next keyframe, creating this nice low frame rate staccato look. And that's exactly what I was going for. We'll just move this down in the layer stack, change the blending mode to overlay, and maybe bring the opacity down a bit. Yep, perfect. Now, this looks great as part of a background, but what if you want to apply this texture only to a specific area or element? For a simple shape, drawing a mask might work, except masks move with the layer that they're attached to, and we just animated this layer all over the place. So while I guess you could waste your life trying to counter animate this mask back into the right spot every time it hits a new position keyframe, perhaps we should try doing this the right way instead. Let's say we want to fill up this type with the texture. And just for added challenge, I added some animation. And of course, our texture layer is still animated, right? So this would be pretty much impossible to do with masks. We need what's called a track mat, where one layer uses the transparency information of another layer. To set that up, we'll come down into the timeline, and you may not see the track mat options by default. So you can click this button right here that says Toggle Switches and Modes. Now you can see your blending modes and your track mats. Selecting the texture layer, we can just use this little drop-down menu to select the type layer. And now, poof, the type layer turns itself off and the texture is only visible inside that type. With another preview, we can see both layers animating just like we wanted and the texture only visible inside that type layer. Awesome. You may have noticed these little icons added next to the layer names, indicating that the texture is using a track mat and the type is the track mat. To step this up a bit, we could actually turn the original type layer back on and place it below the texture. Change the blending mode of the texture, and now we can see both. And because of the way we set this up, it's all still totally editable, so we can change these words to anything we like. Cool, right? The concept of using one layer to affect another one is probably not new to you. It just might have a slightly different name here. You can actually have multiple layers all using the same layer as a track mat, which means you can do some really complex looking stuff, but maybe control all of it from one place. Nice. Finally, let's explore a whole new dimension. I'm just finishing up this city skyline scene. Let's add a nice little crescent moon created by using merge paths with two overlapping circles, of course, and add a few more windows using the repeater. And now I'm ready to animate. But if you've ever tried to simulate a parallax effect in 2D, you may have discovered that it can be tricky to make it feel right. And it gets uh, fiddly trying to animate these different layers at different speeds. But there's a better way to handle this. In real life, the further away from your eye something is, the less it appears to move as you shift your perspective. You can do the same thing here in After Effects by actually moving the layers further away. But to do this, we'll need to venture into the realm of 3D. I'll solo this middle layer of buildings, then come over here and find the switch with the little cube icon. Clicking that will enable 3D for this layer. Notice how the layer controls have changed to this little 3D gizmo? That means we now have the ability to rotate this on either the X or Y axis. Pretty cool. And in addition to being able to move this horizontally and vertically, we can also move it on the Z axis, meaning toward or away from us. Instead of animating each layer separately, we can arrange them in Z space and then shift the place that we're viewing all of them from. I've arranged the layers so each group of buildings gets progressively further away, with the sky layer being the furthest. Notice this third position value on each one. That's the Z value. I also adjusted the scale so everything still looks the same size that it did in 2D. After Effects gives you ways to view this in perspective, in case that helps give you a better idea what's happening here. From the Layer menu, I'll choose New Camera. This lets you create a virtual camera that you can animate, and you can go as deep into these settings as you like. Once that camera has been created, you can use these various camera tools in the toolbar to adjust the view. I'll choose the middle one. Now I can drag in the viewer to adjust the position of the camera and totally change my perspective on the whole scene. Let's move over here for the beginning of the animation, create some keyframes for both point of interest and position, press end to jump to the last frame, and use that camera tool to move all the way over here. Now we have that perfect perspective shift without having to animate each layer on its own. 
And if you want to adjust how fast one of them appears to be moving, you can just tweak the layer's Z position to move it closer to or further away from the camera. This opens up all kinds of new visual possibilities, but one of my favorite ways to use this is to slightly offset the perspective on an otherwise flat scene. I mean, even the After Effects interface looks cool when you give it a tilty camera angle, right? Here's another composition with several elements. I have an animated texture matted to this background shape. I actually reversed our earlier process and have this type matted to use the white and black values of this other texture layer. And then I've arranged all the layers at a variety of Z values to give them depth. And again, just by animating the camera, this time using the camera orbit tool, I can create this subtle shift in perspective. Or I could make this much more extreme if that's what's appropriate. 3D opens up several other possibilities, like adding lighting and realistic shadows. And maybe I'll finish this whole thing off by creating a 2D adjustment layer with a curves effect to make everything pop just a little bit. While it definitely means more to keep track of, even adding just a little bit of 3D to your After Effects toolbox gives you new possibilities maybe you never even thought about before. And since I want you to think about incorporating After Effects into your design process, remember that 3D camera can be an easy way to add a dynamic perspective to a flat design without even animating. Hmm. Hey, you made it. And I bet you learned something new, right? Let me know in the comments which tip was your favorite or if there's something else you think should have been on my list. And if you're sick of bouncing around YouTube and you're ready to finally learn After Effects in an intentional, structured way with real world projects tailored specifically for designers learning how to animate, then my After Effects Essentials course was made for you. I'll help you love After Effects as much as I do. Almost. Check out that link below and I'll see you in class. Thanks so much for watching.